Good evening, my dear listeners. I'm Father Adriano Zandona from Canção Nova in Brazil, returning to spend a little time uh, with you today. This is our last day of our Christian Crusade. Uh, I would like to uh, thank, thank Father Bob and uh, Pastor Basil because they have been doing a great evangelization uh, work, uh, reaching people out for Jesus. Thank you, Father Bob, a great friend, everyone in uh, and, and Anthony Parish in Austin, Massachusetts. Thank you all. God bless you all. And uh, today I'm going to wrap it up, this reflection about the three great theological virtues, faith, hope, and love. First day, we have talked about faith and how it can empower us to face our troubles, to beat anxiety and fear. And second day, uh, yesterday actually, we have talked about hope and can how it can be a tool to help us overcome depression, overcome sadness, overcome bad feelings. And today we are about to talk about love, how this important precious virtue can help us uh, being better people, overcome our failures, uh, our regrets, our bad memories. Well, firstly, let me tell it straightforward. Let me say it for, to you. God loves you. Sometimes it's hard to accept. Sometimes it's hard to let it in your sins. Don't prevent God for, from loving you. God loves us. God loves you. He is with you all the way. Yeah. He is with you right now to help you. Help you to bear your ordinary crosses. Maybe you have a loved one that is uh, ill, that has a, a, a disease, disease. Maybe you've lost some loved one. Let the, God, the love that comes from God comfort you right now. Console you right now. He's with you all the way. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, uh, being Christian and living a Christian life is more than just wearing a t-shirt with numbers and blazon on it. We need to receive God's unconditional love in our heart and accept that we are His precious children. Our lives matter to Him. Uh, what we've been going through really matters to Him. And no matter what our pain and mistakes are all about, we are not forsaken by Him. As you see, the Bible is the great source of wisdom for us. I always tell people that when you read the Bible, you need to remember that it is spoken directly to you. You need to put yourself in the story. It's a profound personal experience. Yes, reading the Bible is an experience that you live through which you can deeply experience God's infinite love. So when I hit that, the popular, popular passage, John 3, 16, I need to understand that God loves the world so much that He has given His only Son to save this world. For example, He sacrificed, he sacrificed His only Son for you and for me, for love of us, for love, love of this world and for love of you, of me. That's right. He did it for you. He did it for me. He did it to protect you. He did it to give you strength. He did it to make you a better person. He did it to give you a better life in His light. Well, as you can see, I'm a big fan of the Bible. I'm a Catholic priest, after all. The Bible is an anxiety text filled with the wisdom of the ages. It is the word from God. We can find, listen, we can find the teachings of the great kings of Israel, like David. We can find the teachings of the earliest Christians. And most importantly, we can find the story of the life of our Lord Jesus Christ and His instructions to us about how to pray, how to live, how to love. 
Every one of us needs to integrate the Bible into our practice of our faith. We should take the time every day to read and think about this great source of wisdom and guidance. The Bible isn't just a series of catchphrases. There is a lot more in there than. Just do it. Take the time to read. Think about the stories. Meditate on the teachings. There are instructions that are meant for you in those pages. So you need to take the time to find them, understand them, and put them into practice in your life. Well, today we'll finish our conversation about the three great theological virtues. We discussed, uh, uh, and today we are about to discuss love. So what is the theological virtue of love? In the first letter of John, chapter 4, verses 7 to 8, St. John tells us, Dear friends, let love each other because, let's love each other because love is from God and everyone who loves is born from God and knows God. The person who doesn't love does not know God because God is love, is the essence of God. God is love. Those are powerful words. They are words that inspire all Christians, Christian people to be better individuals, better friends, better parents, better, better children, and better neighbors. In the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 8, we read, Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. And in the same letter, and in the chapter, in the chapter 14, we also read, and now these three, three virtues remain. Remain faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Love is the mark of the disciple. In the Gospel of John, chapter 14, uh, 13, sorry, verse 36, Jesus said that by this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Look, look what Jesus chose as the identifying characteristic of Christians. He didn't say that you will know Christians because of their fasting, he didn't say that you know Christians because of their political positions. Sure, those things are important. But Jesus told us that the defining mark of Christian discipleship is love. That sounds simply enough, simple enough, right? But the problem is, like the word hope, the word love, gets thrown around so much that is that it has lost its meaning. How many times have you heard the word love today? How many times have you said the word love today? It would be different if we just used the word love to say how we feel about our moms. But we love food, sports and celebrities. Uh, we love movies, nature, long walks on the beach and everything in between. So, if you really love that caramel cappuccino, <laughs> what does that mean about your relationship with God? So, when Jesus said love, that love would be the mark of his disciples, it might seem that it doesn't mean much. We've diluted the meaning of love so much that it seems not to mean much or anything at all, of anything at all. But if you look, the life of Jesus in the pages of the scripture, you see a very different meaning of the word love. Love was more than a word. Love was a way of life. Christian love, what Jesus said would identify Christians, has to stand out. It has to be different. It has to be unique. The theological virtue of love is sometimes called charity. People always say things like, I love hot chocolate, I love basketball, or even I love my country. And while these kinds of love are good, good in themselves, 
they still fall short of the love that is charity. What is charitable love? Habs, habs, habits sorry, of charity calls our hearts say yes to Jesus and to everything he wants to give us and asks of us. Being charitable in our thoughts, words, and actions, actions is a way to cultivate Jesus in our heart, in your heart. It's a way of affirming your embrace of Jesus. When we live loving lives, we let Jesus in. We welcome him into our lives, our minds, and our hearts. This helps us to grow as individuals and strengthen strengthens our Christian community so we can live and grow in him. C.S. Lewis was one of the great Christian writers of the 20th century. He draws our attention to a few important passages from the Bible in the Gospel of John, among the last words that Jesus spoke to his disciples before his passion. In chapter 15, verse 12, were the words, This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. C.S. Lewis has taught, taught that Jesus knew, knew what was coming and he was trying to pass on his most important teachings to his friends through this special commandment. There are many things that are important to Christians, but all of them are wrapped up in this one thing, love. Christ chose love to be the identifying badge of his disciples. You can recognize a police, police, sorry, police officer or soldier from his uniform or a fan of sport te sports team by his cap or jersey, but Christians aren't recognizable because of a uniform or a t-shirt. They are recognized because of how they live their lives, embracing love, Love is helping other people and embracing their pain, but it doesn't mean avoiding teaching and correcting them. When you really love someone, you have to put an effort to tell the truth and correct their wrongdoing in order to make them grow in God's friendship and to provide them means to become the best possible version of themselves. Well, uh, Let's listen right now. It was an introduction of this theme, theme that's amazing. I'm talking about love. Everyone needs to be loved and to love uh, one another in these trying times. And uh, let's listen a song right now. Uh, it was, which was written by me originally in Portuguese and uh, it was translated into English uh, after some time. The song's name is Oh, Please Heal Me, Lord. Heal me with your amazing love. Uh, I hope that this amazing song reach your life and bless you right now. But, but before the song, let me pray a little bit for you. Oh, amazing Lord, please bless us with your love. Heal us, Lord, with your love. Oh, please heal us, Lord. Save us with your love. With the strength God loves bring, I know I can do all things. Please, Lord, send upon us your love. Heal us, Lord. Heal our diseases, our pain. Heal us from sadness. Set us free from depression, from breakdowns. Set us free from addiction. Heal our bodies, our souls, and our minds, Lord. In Jesus' name, send upon us your Holy Spirit. We ask your help, Lord. We ask your intercession, Blessed Mother, your prayers for us. Bless us, Lord. Bless us, Jesus. Heal us with your love. We trust you, Lord. Amen. Let's listen to this amazing song. There are so many memories and things that I feel 
There are so many wounds that I need you to heal. Surrounded by disdain, when I've lost my dreams to pain. That's when I hear your voice and the your love calling my name. There are so many memories and things that I feel. There are so many wounds that I need you to heal. Surrounded by disdain When I've lost my dreams to pain That's when I hear your voice and the your love Calling my name Oh, please heal me, Lord Oh, please save me with your love I shall win and carry on If with you I walk along Oh, please heal me, Lord Oh, please save me with your love I'm aware of all my sins Make me strong to rise above With the strength God's love brings I know I can do all things oh, 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 oh. shall win and carry on if with you I walk along oh please heal me Lord oh please save me with your love I'm aware of all my sins make me strong to rise above with the strength God's love brings I know I can do all things Well, coming back to our show Talking about the great theological virtue of love through his amazing love, God can lift you up right now. Please just let his love heal you. Let it in, in your soul, in your mind. Maybe you had, you have a lack of love inside you. Maybe you were unloved by your parents. You were not accepted by your relatives, your family. But God always accepts you as you are. He always loves you. He's with you all the way. Well, Jesus explained what loving our neighbor, neighbors really means when we came up with the great parable of the Good Samaritan. This is in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses from 25 to 37. Let's listen to it right now. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He replied. Uh, How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. 
You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And replied, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho uh, when he was attacked by the Robert, robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, uh, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where that man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged him his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, to an inn and took care of him. The next day he gave money to an keeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Well, as Jesus has taught us here, love is about action. It's about take care, take care, taking care of others uh, in need that are closer closer to us, and it is also about patiently, patiently uh, embracing the people with their own wounds and circumstances, and so help them to overcome their failures and fix their lives. Love is about mercy. It's about helping people without judging them and condemning, condemning them. There are a lot of judges of people's lives in this world nowadays. Uh, and we don't need more people like those. We need instead people who act like hospitals and doctors, who mercifully heal other, others' pain. And we don't need people who act, act like courts, courts and judges anymore. In a relationship thing, of course. <laughs> I'm talking about uh, we love God by loving others. And we love our and our love for people is a great sign of our love for God, our Creator. As Jesus Himself told us in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 40, 40. Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. In the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, St. Paul is very critical of hypocrisy. He tells us that if you are a preacher but have no love in your heart, you are nothing, nothing. If you have the greatest knowledge in the world but have no love in your heart, you are empty. If you give great gifts of charity just to show off but have no love in your heart, it isn't really charity at all. C.S. Lewis had powerful words about it, about this. All other virtues, virtues are in vain when love is absent. What does Jesus mean when he says, Love one another as I've loved you? How does God love? What are the special characteristics of divine love? We can only figure that out if we really take a close look uh, at how God really shows His love for us. There are two great moments of divine love for humanity. Keep it in mind. Uh, those moments are creation and incar incarnation. Creation might be accurately described as God loving things into existence. He loves you and me. And because of this love, we actually come to be. The fact that we exist, the exist is founded on the fact that God loves us. 
God doesn't benefit from creation at all. Supplying creatures with existent, ex existence is a pure gift, without any gain on his gain on his part. Creatures receive everything from the act of creation, while the creator his, receives nothing from it. From the divine perspective, creation is a completely selfless act of love, in which God gives his own being to us. It's for us. This love which God bears for humanity, for humanity is most dramatically proven in the mystery of the Incarnation. God gave His marvelous, selfless gift to humanity, existence. But how did the human race respond to this divine gift? With ingratitude, pride and disobedience. Because of humanity's own sin, it was plunged into desolation and misery. But out of his vast love, God chose, chose to become man. And in a staggering act of humility, he went on to suffer the most horrible agonies, culminating in death on a cross, and then rose from the dead after three days in the tomb. Three days in the tomb. All this he did for our sakes even though there was nothing personally for him to profit from it. And even though we had so shamefully scorned his gift, we had, we had, sorry, so shamefully scorned his gifts of life and love. Here then, we see God loving in a manner that is still selfless, but also excruciatingly sacrificial. Sometimes loving ourselves, other people, and even God is hard. And to be really able to live it, we'll need to overcome our own selfishness, laziness, pride, and isolation. These days we hear so much about feeling, about being, sorry, self-sufficient and not relying on anyone else. But the thing is, no one is living alone on this earth. No one can do everything they need in order to survive, grow and thrive. Sometimes we must rely on other people. But above all, we must rely on God. It will take humility from us and we should work on this firmly. It's not easy at all, but when we keep making a serious effort to put this great virtue into practice uh, in our daily lives, we begin to share God's life and nature. And then we become whole and stronger, stronger than before. God is love. And when we imitate, imitate Him by loving and forgiving as He does, we receive His abundant blessings and His wise guidance. St. Francis de, Sa de Sales, Sales thought us, thought that you learn to speak by speaking, to study by studying, to run by running, to work by working, and just so, you learn to love by loving. Oh, those who think to learn in other way deceive themselves, themselves. So how can you learn to live this great theological virtue of love? You need to put it into practice. If you want to learn to speak charitable, loving words, you must practice. Find the words in the Bible, find them in your heart, Say kind words to someone who needs to hear them. Put an end to an old grudge that's been lingering on weighing you down. If you want to learn to live a loving life, you must turn your thoughts into actions. You must put it into practice. For some people, love is used as a weapon or some kind of bargaining chip. It's something that we hold back, waiting for another person to deserve it. It's ironic to think that we use the word so freely and yet we have the tendency to be so careful with its reality. But Christian love, let me go straight to you, is different. As Christians, we don't wait for someone to show themselves to be love, lovable or worthy of our love. Rather. Christian love is initiative. 
St. Paul John, Saint John Paul sorry, the second taught us, do not forget that true love sets no condition. It does not calculate or complain, but simply loves. Christian love goes, it pursues, it seeks out, just as Jesus did for us. This is how we should love, to love like Jesus, to love in a sacrificial, demonstrated, and initiative taken kind of way. This is unique, and indeed it should be. We have to be the people who are marked by this selfless, sacrificial love so that the world will know the Jesus whom we claim to represent. Saint Therese of Lycia said, Let us love, since that is what our hearts were made for. Please, Lord, help us love as you've loved us. Help us, Lord, to put this amazing virtue into practice in our daily lives. We want to love as you did, Jesus. Make us able to do so. Help us with your love. Heal us from our heartaches, from our disappointments with people. Heal us, Lord, with your love. Amen. Let's listen to uh, some music right now. Uh, in the morning, joy shall arrive is the song's name. And this is a powerful message. It was a, a song written by me originally in Portuguese. And after some time, it was related, translated into English. Let's listen to it. Just can't take it And you feel you won't make it Your enemies attack And make you feel weak Have faith in the Lord Remember what He has promised That He's gonna raise you up No matter how dark Your night seems to be If sorrow and pain Are making you weep Have faith in the Lord And keep moving on Cause sadness isn't where you If the anguish and fear 
Well, coming back to our last part of our last day. Oh, it's been so amazing. I want to thank you, Father Bob, again. Thank you, Pastor Basil, everyone that those uh, has been have been working uh, in this crusade to make you receive this subject, this powerful message from the Word of God. Well, I'd like to say... Uh, Here, how God's love can touch, touch, uh, touch us and restores us. And His powerful love can set us free from evil and addiction. Healing our deep wounds and making us into a new person. St. Francis of Assisi once said, All the darkness in the world cannot extinguish the light of a single candle. We have to let go. To let God's love be a light in our lives, a guiding light to illuminate our path. As Saint Joe, John Paul II once said, darkness can be only can only be scattered by the light, and hatred can only be conquered by love. The main question that we should ask ourselves is: do you really believe that God loves you personally? permanently, unreservedly, and infinitely? A lot of time we stray into sin, sin because we don't truly understand God's love. The Venerable Archbishop uh, Funton J. Shin defined love in these simple but profound words. Sin is hurting the one you love. These words really have a deep personal meaning, uh, don't they? It means that when you see sin, you are sabotaging your relationship with God. You could even destroy that relationship, which is the most important relationship in your life, in our lives. Uh, no one wants to hurt that relationship with God. And we need to remember that serious sin are not just breaking the commandments, Sins are breaking our profound intimacy with God and kind of building in a wall between us and Him. That is, when we freely choose to commit sin, we're setting God apart from our lives and rejecting His amazing love. One of the fundamental truths of the Christian faith is that God brings greater good out of evil. In the letter of Romans, chapter 5, verse 12, St. Paul tells us, Where sin abounds, the grace of God abounds all the more. This means that God can take a terrible tragedy and turn it into a moment of real victory to show His love and glory. If you think about the very beginning of the Bible, you see a very clear example of this. Original sin and, consequently, in the Gospels, the incarnation of Jesus, our Savior. God gives us all freedom, as He did with Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve misused their freedom and committed original sin. But God, in His infinite compassion for us, sent His only begotten Son, Jesus, born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, our Mother, to save us. At Easter Vigil, All Catholics sing, O oh, happy fault, O oh, happy fault, that brought us to brought us so great a Savior. You might ask why God sent Jesus to earth, and the answer is that He did it for us. God loves us so much that He sent His only Son to save us from the devil, slavery to sin, and eternal damnation. God has given us many, many gifts that show His amazing love for us. So when we are tempted by sin, we should remember these gifts. The incarnation of Jesus, the Son of God made man, uh, His life on earth, His passion and death that He suffered for you and for me, uh, the Christian th faith He left us through which we, He remains with us, the church, the sacraments, especially Eucharist, and finally, the gift of Mary as our loving mother. 
when we consider these gifts, it can make uh, makes us stronger and help us to resist to resist the temptation of sin and to embrace our relationship with Jesus, who will never fail us. Saint Thomas Aquinas said, "The things that we love tell us what we are. The things we love show our heart. Are we really a combination of sports?" Theme and ice cream flavors? <laughs> I believe that we are greater. I believe that our love for God defines us as Christian people, as little children of Him. In the letter, letter of Ephesians, chapter 3, 3, verses 18 to 19, St. Paul wrote, I ask that you have the power to grasp loves, gra grasp loves, width and length, high and depth, together with all believers, I ask that you know the love of Christ that is beyond knowledge, so that you'll be filled entirely with the fullness of God. So, in order to clarify it all and show you how powerful God loves, love is, I'm going to share a bit of my testimony with you. So, I'm going to share my life testimony with you. It's so personal, but I think that my sharing here could help you, could help you uh, as a mother, you the ma mom that mother that's been struggling with your son or daughter addictions, you that have been suffering with something huge. I'm going to share my life testimony with you. Well, uh, I was brought up in the south of Brazil, in a place that is colder than other parts of the country, because we, we are in a tropical country, you know. <laughs> and uh, I have an amazing family. My parents did great. They did the, as much as they could. I was brought up in a Christian family, in a Catholic family. My ancestors came from Italy to the south of Brazil, and through them I received my Catholic, my Christian background. But because of uh, bad influences, because some bad choices that I made, I got lost in my adolescence in a terrible way. I started to do drugs when I was just only 11 years old. Do you believe that? Unfortunately, it happened to me. Because some bad influences, uh, one friend of mine introduced me to a satanic rock and I started to participate in satanic rock groups. And there I started to do drugs. But initially I was very good from in hiding things from my parents, from my family. No one could realize, could notice that I was doing drugs. But as you can uh, imagine, my addiction grew, was growing. And because of that, I started to lose the control of my life. I was an athlete. I used to play in a handball team at school, in my school. And when I was about to turn 15, I got kicked out of my handball team because of drugs. And after that, my life went through rough, rough times. I started to use uh, other kind of drugs, cocaine, uh, marijuana, and uh, worse than this, other kind of drugs in South America. You know, unfortunately, we have a lot of them here. Uh, you know the word, of course, but in some places here it's terrible. And uh, when I was about to turn 16, I got into a coma because of addiction, because of the drugs. I mixed drugs with alcohol and I come into a coma. And my mom was suffering a lot because of my addiction. My, my father, I got, I got kicked out of my school at that time because of drugs as well. I almost died in that coma. 
And after that coma, I fall into depression. I got a depression and I was always thinking about suicide, about end my life. I had no perspective. I had no hope. I had no faith. I had no love. I felt like I was a, a loser and I was a living soul as a loser. But despite the many mistakes I've made at that time, I'm so great, grateful to God because he gave me a great mom, a great mom. And she prayed for me a lot. She never gave up on me. She always said me, to me, son, God loves you. God has a purpose in your life. I didn't believe that at the beginning, but her love and her insistence was touching me, was showing me that there was another way that I could be happy again. I could have a happier life. And she insisted to me to pray. I didn't like to pray at that time. I had never uh, thought about being a priest. I didn't like to go to the church, but her love, her insistence were touching me gradually. And through her prayers and through a friend of mine that invited me to participate in a group of uh, in a retreat for young people, I came to know God. I had a deep and amazing encounter, encounter with Christ. I had two terrible losses. I lost two friends of mine. One was killed by drug dealers and another one died in a car accident. And because of that, I was so sad. And I went to that retreat and there I received the gift of the Holy Spirit. I was, I was healed by Jesus himself through the gift of the Holy Spirit. He set me free from addictions in that retreat. I was so addicted. I was... I got lost, very lost, but in that retreat, retreat, by listening to the voice of the Lord through the preachers, the gift of hope, love, and faith uh, start over inside my, inside my soul, my mind, and uh, I got rid of the drugs, the addictions over there, and I surrendered my life to Jesus, and I started to follow His path. I started to participate in a group of young people in my church, in my parish. And after some uh, datings, some uh, time, I started to feel feel that God was, to, was calling me to follow his, his path more closely. And I went to the seminary when I was 21 years old. And I've studied in the seminary for almost nine years. And I've been a priest for almost 10 years. I'm so happy. I had never felt the happiness I've been feeling these days with Jesus. I received from him a better, a new life. And Jesus can do everything. He can set you free. He can set your child free, your children, your son, your daughter free. He can lift you up. He can heal you from addiction. He can heal you from depression and anxiety because he did it for me. I became a priest in order to show, to spread his love, his message to this world. Well, it's my story. The, the powerful God's love has set me free and he can do the same. He can do the same for you. Our amazing Lord, I want to thank you right now because you are so good, because you have been so kind to us. You love us as we are. We accept us as we are. Send your love upon us, Lord. Send your Holy Spirit upon us. Make us able to live a life with you. Make us able to love you, to love other people, our neighbor. Heal our pain. Heal our hearts. Make us real Christians. Set us free from any evil. Lift us up with your love, Lord. Please, fill us with your love. Every hope every God-shaped hole inside us. Fill right now this up with your love, Lord. We adore you. We worship you. Please change our lives. 
set us free from every evil word. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It was a pleasure to me be here with you. And keep in touch. Uh, we can follow, you can find me through social media and through uh, St. Anthony Parish a show in WROL radio station. God bless you. Thank you so much. Yeah.